Welcome to the second Unfound Team episode. Today you get to hear from Emily, the assistant who has been with me the longest. We talk about aspirations that she had early in her life, how she became acquainted with Unfound, how she goes about finding future guests, and where she is headed in her personal life for 2024, and a bunch of other stuff. Next Monday, March 4th, will be Assistant Eric. Then I will finish out the series with Cherie on March 11th. Before the interesting talk with Emily starts, I'm sending out a request to all of you. I would love to add you to the team I already have if you have a strong background in any of one of the following areas. Marketing, online retail, website building. If so, email me at unfoundpodcast at gmail.com in which you tell me a little bit about yourself while also giving me a quick rundown of your experience. This would be a volunteer position, but as any of the current assistants will tell you, all I ask of any of them is to devote a couple hours a week to whatever their expertise is. That's it. Okay, now the interview. I'm so happy to interview the longest tenured assistant uh, that I have, and that is Emily. Emily, welcome to this team episode. Thank you. I'm so happy to be doing this again. Yeah, yeah. You should know we did one of these. Maybe people don't know. We did one of these maybe four years ago, and I just thought I thought it was time uh, to do another one, catch up with everybody, see what's going on in everybody's lives. Of course, a lot of things have gone on in the last four years, so it's good to talk uh, to you. And we're doing this interview on January 15th of 2024. Uh, we, should, we should note, Emily just told me before we started this, that it's like minus 10 uh, where she is, but she is nice and safe and warm. Right, Emily? Right, yeah, it's really, really cold. <laughs> really, really cold. Okay, so let's uh, just talk a little bit about yourself, your background. When I think of you, Emily, I think of how much family is so important to you. I know you post a lot of pictures about your your sisters, your your uh, nieces and nephews, cousins and everything. Maybe you want to start there. Just give a little about, about your background, including your family. Okay, so I have a really close big family. I grew up with both my parents. Um, I'm the oldest. I have a younger sister. And we've always been really close. Um, We're more closer to our dad, but, you know, we're so close to our mom, too. Yeah. Um, Anyways. And so, and then we also grew up with our grandparents, our cousins, our aunts, uncles. And then as we got older, my sister has a husband and five kids, and I'm really close to her and her kids. Wow. Um, I go and see them. Because I love states away for a long so I usually go and see them every other month or so. So oh, yeah, yeah, I, really close to them. Right, and um, I should ask you, where did you grow up? Where did you all grow up in Arkansas? Camden, Arkansas, in the country. In the country, okay. Down the road from the trees in the river. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, excellent. All right, so you have a, a big family. And you're very, you know, I know you're doing a lot of traveling and, and everything with them. What about uh, your background? What, you know, what, uh, or what are you, what have you been into uh, your interests in Emily? Uh, maybe going back to, you know, high school, junior high school, you know, what were you kind of into? What are you, were your interests? Of course, outside of disappearances, what other things really interest you? Um, I really like helping people. Um, mm-hmm. That's always been something that my parents instilled in us. Mm-hmm. Help people when you can, and that kind of stuff. And I was also interested in like um, investigation type work. And when mm-hmm. I was younger, I wanted to be a uh, um, homicide investigator. But then I realized as I really got older, because that was like 10, 11 years old, I realized that. Maybe wow. like 12, like real young. Okay. And then as I got older and I finally realized that, hey, these people actually have to go to the scenes of the crime. They really have to look at bodies. I knew that I'm too much of an emotional person to be able to do that. So I was like, I'm going to have to find something else to do. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and then when I was a little girl, I always helped take care of my grandparents. Um 
you know, do things for them, help them bathe, you know, wash their hair, do their nail, you know, just stuff like that, help them clean house. And I was like, you know, I really, really like helping people. So, and my aunt was a nurse and I see, and I got to go with her sometimes at her job and I seen how she got to help people just on the medical side of things. And I was like, you know, I, w- I think I would like doing that. I would like helping people. So as I got older, I wanted to be a nurse. And at one point, uh, um, I worked for a prison for five and a half years. Right, and I was I like, that. you know, I also like legal stuff. Yeah. I like legal work. Yes. So I was like, you know, um, I can do that. So I went to school, and I'm currently in school. I should have a during by summer to be a parent, you know, to get my associates in paralegal studies. Wow. Um, and then I'm going to do nursing. Right now, my boyfriend and I, uh, we travel and do right. health uh, healthcare work. Yeah. So. That's what I'm currently doing, and then I do, like I said, on found I do some work for you. you sure, and then you sure do. Uh, when I can, you sure do, and I, I appreciate every second of it. I really, really appreciate Emily. Emily is done so much for uh, the podcast over the past almost seven years. I can't even begin to explain how many people. Uh, have appeared on Unfound because of the work that Emily has done. I want to go back to, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, wanting to be a homicide detective. Then you realize, well, I got to go to these crime scenes and things. Where do you think that came from? Uh, Anybody else in your family ever interested in that? Anybody else in law enforcement? Where do you think that came, you know, for you? Where did that that come from? Um, I have an aunt. My aunt, she had some, I think it was her niece and her family, and she liked that kind of stuff. And I remember when we, when, um, we, you know, we found out we were both interested in that. She's a little bit older than me, but we were talking, and that she's the one that, like, brought it up, but I'll never forget. I'm like, well, I'm not going to be able to do that then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, All right. Yeah, you know, that's, where, that's where that came from. <laughs> Right, and so I, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, was there any particular case that, you you know, or something or some TV show that you ended up seeing that got you interested in homicide investigations? Um, I think it was Cops. I remember oh. my parents used to watch that sometimes, and I would mm. watch them, like, try to get bad guys and stuff like that. Mm. And then I would see, like, my mom or my, my dad, too, were very, very, very protective of us, like... Yeah. They didn't let us, like, you know, some people just let their kids play outside and they don't watch on they don't go check. My parents, even though we lived in the country and surrounded by family, my parents would not, I could not go, if my mom could not see me from the yard, I could not, mm. I couldn't go any further. Like, mm. she, I had it, she had to be able to see me. And so I don't always thought, like, you know, why? Like, why is she so protective? And then she would sit and tell me, you know, and my dad both would say, well, you don't know who's out there, and like, there's bad guys out there that like kids and do mm, bad sure. things to them. And I was like, you know, that's terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just awful. And so I remember that, step, you know, that stuck in my head. And like, that's why they don't let us just do anything, you know? And so the older I got, the more I got interested in criminal shows. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know, and the, the um, missing people is like particularly interesting to me because it's like where are they you know what i'm saying yeah like, i do you know yeah with murdered people and stuff like that they have at least they have something with missing people a lot of times they have nothing and it's just like so sad to me growing up in arkansas can you remember the first time that everybody should know emily is considerably younger uh, than I am. In fact, I think I, she's, a, I think, I, Emily, I think you're at least 20 years younger than I am. So we're, you know, two totally oh, different right. generations and everything. But so when you right. became, you know, like a, you know, a teenager, the internet already existed. Can you remember maybe some first murders or disappearances or whatever you first read about, like maybe in Arkansas, maybe elsewhere, the first ones that maybe kind of caught your attention well before you and I ever met? Yes, it was the um, case of the girl out of Alma, Arkansas, and I cannot remember her name, but she went missing at a baseball field, and I remember my mom talking about um, talking about her case mm-hmm. and how, you know, there's bad people, and they can just take you, and I remember her calling her name specifically, and I was like, wow, well, and then when I got older, and I heard, remember I heard the name again, I was like, wow, well, mm-hmm. um, that's that case mom told me about. Wow. Are you talking about Morgan Nick? 
That's it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, yeah, right. That's it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yes, that one. That is that, uh, that did happen in Arkansas. We've not covered that on Unfound yet. Would certainly like to. But uh, when right. you said the baseball field, I th- think that's what kind of what tipped me off. Is is that's yep. that's the one. And so that kind of um, uh, got your attention. That's like one of the first ones you can remember. Right. Okay. All right. And you know, you you become a, a young adult. You figure out that. Uh, maybe homicide and everything is is not meant for you. You said you worked uh, you worked for a prison for five and a half years, and that's where you were working when we first met, I think. And it, yes. was that also? Did you get into that because you you know was that just something you said? Well, I'm going to do that, or was that did that also come from being interested in crime and and things? How did that all come about? Or were those two things connected? Uh, no, not really. So I moved to Texas and I needed a job and somebody that had been a correctional officer told me that they thought that I would, I would be good at that and that I should try it out. Uh-huh. Okay. And so I didn't think I would be good at it and I felt like I was, you know, I, I could be too nice, but then working there really taught me a lot and, you know, showed mm-hmm. me that sometimes you can't be so nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot. Yeah, let me, let's talk about that. Of course, you're interested in... Uh, crime at one time in your early life, and you end up uh, working at this jail. And of course, you probably see things that, like for myself, I'm never going to see. But how did that influence your attitude toward crime and and felons and, and all of those things while working there for five and a half years? You know, what what kind of ideas did you get? It showed me that there's some people that just don't care about nobody but themselves, and there's a, and you know. You like to think good of people, but they're, they're really, like, I ran across some evil people, and I'm like, well, there are true evil people in this world. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and that's, like, you know, a reminder that not everybody's nice. There's a lot of bad people out there, more than I think people realize. Right. Now, so in the jail that you were working, were there murderers in there? Yes. There were. There were child molester murderers. Wow. Yeah, they wouldn't stay there for long, but they would come through when we would have to deal with them. Wow, so you were in a hardcore place. No, I wouldn't say hardcore. It was just I worked at an intake unit. Okay. So the, any any female that was sentenced to prison of came mm. through where I worked. Okay. So we, because they had to get their ID and all their, and, and classified and all that, and all that would be where I worked. So they would have to, they would still come through there, and they would be in, in a, you know, depending on how bad the trauma was, they'd be in a, in a segregation cell, but I work segregation, so sometimes I had to deal with them. Okay. And you did that for five and a half years? Yes. Okay. And uh, we know, you know, and once again, uh, people should know, Emily's life has changed quite a bit since when I met right. her. You know, of course, uh, everybody should know, Emily and I have never met in person, but uh, we've had a lot of interaction over like the last six and a half years. But her life, is what I would say, has definitely changed for the better. In the last six right. and a half years, yeah. we won't we won't get to, into that stuff. But certainly, I, I I just am so happy for how much your life has changed in the last few years. You seem to be in a really good place, Emily, and so I'm very very happy for uh, you. And, and, thank and you. You're, you're very welcome. welcome. Positive people around me. Yeah, for, for sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure. And I I I, and I think I can speak for other people who know you very well that everything that has gone on with you the last couple of years, everybody is so happy to see it. Um, Thank you, Rand. I really do appreciate that. You're very welcome. Um, can you remember, you, you talked about your parents being, in, uh, you know, uh, watching cops, and I can remember watching cops. Any other TV shows or uh, things that maybe influenced you and you're, you, you having an interest in maybe unsolved murders, unsolved disappearances, any other publications or books or TV shows, yeah. anything like that that have influenced you? Um, I used to watch Unsolved Mysteries, too. They'd watch that sometimes. I did believe my mom would watch that sometimes, I think. Uh-huh. Okay. So I would watch that. And then um, my grandparents, I would watch things with them, too, sometimes like that. Also, I'd watch the FBI Files and the New Detective. I think that was the name of the right, show. Right. And so, yep, I, I liked all that. Forensic Files, all that kind of stuff. Forensic Files, right. That's Forensic Files is also a popular one that comes up on a lot of people's list. Man, that show's been around forever, for sure. Right. Okay. Uh, moving maybe into the uh, the era of uh, podcasting, you know, you know, before, and we're going to get into how you finally 
uh, you and I finally ran into each other. But uh, before you got involved with Unfound, were there any other podcasts or, or that you listened to? Maybe, you know, of course, podcasting might have started around 2011, 2012, becoming popular. Was there anything that you got into uh, having an interest in crime? Yes. So what happened was I had ran out of, I think, Disappear episodes of Watcher. I mm. ran out of stuff to, to watch, basically. I had watched almost everything. Yep. So I started Googling true crime, and I found podcasts. And I think, I don't want to say the name of it, but there was one, there was one I listened to that's very popular. Uh-huh. Um, and I listened to it, and I liked I liked what she was saying, but I didn't like the format that she was saying it is because she doesn't, she edits a lot, and I just didn't like that. Okay. But I did, I did recommend a couple cases to her, and she never like she didn't seem very act like she was very interested. So then I started hearing yours, and I was like, I like the way this guy, huh. this guy does it. Huh. The interviews better. Thanks. So I remember um, I had I don't know what it was, but the Brandy Wells case yes. really yes I, I like pulled in my heart. I don't know how to say it. But that was one, like, I really wanted to be soft, so I remember I, I suggested that one to you, um, and there's a few others I suggested at around the same time, mm-hmm. and I remember he was like, yep, just let, if you, because I was like, I know her mom, I have her on Facebook, and I remember you saying, well, if you can get her to talk to me, then we'll look into her, I'll look into it, and I was like, okay, and then you took another few of my suggestions, and then I remember telling you, if you needed help, uh-huh. I wouldn't mind helping you. And then I remember you te- giving me, I think it cut, let me do a couple of them and see how I would do. Yeah. And then I remember he was like, yep, whatever. Hey, if you can help me, you can start contacting people. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. And it's, and it's been that way ever since. Yeah, you, and you, I feel like, I, I feel like I'm kind of able to live my dream in another way. I wasn't able to do homicide detective, but I'm able to help you out with Unfound, and so that make that makes yeah. me feel good. It makes me feel like my, my dream like didn't happen at all. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. That's the way I remember it as well. That you had contacted another podcast, and the host didn't seem to be uh, want to go along with what you wanted to do, you know, and the help you wanted to provide. And then you contacted me, and of course, I'm always looking for I'm always looking for good people. And um, so that's how it went. And then Brandy Wells, yes, having Ellen, uh, her mother Ellen, you caught, you reached out to her. Um, maybe we could right. talk about that a little bit. What do you think it was about Brandy Wells? Of course, you were in Texas at the time. She goes missing in Texas. Do you think that had something to do with it? What do you think it was that Brandy Wells' disappearance, unfortunately still unsolved, you know, really spoke to you? What was it? I could see myself and Brandy in a lot of ways. Like, listen to her story, the decisions she made, you know, I, I could see myself doing some of those same things. So I guess that that really stuck stuck out to me. And then her, you know, her friend, her best friend was looking for her, her godmother, her mother. She just had a lot of people looking for her. And I was like, you know, right. if I could, if there's anything I could do to help these people get answers, I, I would do it, you know. And so I don't know. That's just, that case. Mm-hmm. Really stuck to me. Of course, a lot of cases stick to me for different reasons, but I just remember that one sticking, sticking to me because I could see myself in Brandy in ways. Right. And it should be known, uh, of course, that episode came out in like 2017, but you have continued to speak to her family, like behind the scenes, you know, to her mother and to some other people, right? I, I Maybe, I don't know if recently but right. you know once in a while you'll tell me you know something that's going on maybe it hasn't been maybe of course maybe in 2023 but you continue to keep in contact with them right yeah every once in a while i talk to janelle i feel like the most um mm-hmm. we text every now and then i talk to ellen every every so often and you know michelle passed away yeah right i knew that um, yes yes so that's unfortunate, but right. so yeah, I talked to Ellen and Janelle. I talked to Janelle more, but um, mm-hmm. but yeah. Okay. What's so. you know going back to that? Did you uh, being that you were of course approached? A, a, we're not going to name the show here, uh, but you approached a different show. Did you think that you were um, ready to do that? Did you feel confident about that? It's not easy to reach out to strangers and say, "I, I you know, I'm Emily. I want to help you." Did you really think that you were prepared to do that uh, when you first thought about doing that? 
Yes, because my thing is, these people need help, and I feel like the more people that help them, the more better, or the more chance that their loved one is found, and they'll find answers. You know, because there's so many people that don't have that attention; they don't get the you know social media for their loved ones like others do. You know, mm-hmm. and so. I'm not a shy person for the most part, and so if it takes me reaching out to help somebody, then hey, that's that's what I'll do. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> right, that's right, and I and Emily's right. She's not said, just saying that. I, I find you to be a very, uh, um, you know, if you want something, you go for it. You know, and it, you know, right. you're not going to be afraid to, to do that because, as you can, you know, there are a lot of people who are afraid to reach out. You know, how's this person right. reaching out to strangers, and that's something that. Uh, if we're going to do what we do, reaching out to people, this is something you have to get used to. And of course there are a lot of rejections, right? Maybe we should talk about that. A lot of rejections happen, uh, yeah. right? Right? Yeah. I get either, you know, people, yeah, re- playing out rejecting, don't want the help for some reason, or they're, they're just ignoring me. I've seen that too. And then there are some people that unfortunately the way Facebook works, they're not always, they have to look in a specific area on Facebook to tell, like, if people that aren't friends with them send them a message. But right. so they don't always see my message for a while. But, yeah, I do get some rejections, and I do get people, you know, thinking that we're not trying to help them. I have one person tell me, well, what can you do for us? You know? I'm yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think we can. I think we can also say, Emily. I think that's something that we're very similar in the fact we hate when people say they're going to talk to us and then they stand us up. Oh yeah, that that's very frustrating because you know we take our time our time out of our day to do that to set up the time to talk to them. I have had to, you know, um, miss certain things because I've waited and had to talk to people, and then they not even they not even call. Yep. Or not even answer. You know, yep. I've had that happen. And it's very frustrating. I try not to let it bother me because I do talk to so many good people mm-hmm. that um, are so nice and so, you know, so thankful for the help and so appreciative, you know. That's but great. it is very frustrating when you do get blurred off, you know, they're like, you know, I will. That's, that's right. It happen- uh, And it do? doesn't just happen to you, but other people have... Who have reached out, you know, out to guests. It happens to them, it, it, and it still happens to me. You know, even though Unfound is right. a fairly well-known podcast, it still happens. You know, you make plans to talk to people, and then they never pick up the phone. Um, right, definitely frustrating. It, it it is certainly frustrating. Let's talk a little bit uh, about Arkansas disappearances. You've gotten to know quite a few of those people. In fact, you've met some of the guests who have actually appeared. On Unfound, why don't you talk a little bit about that? I know you've gone to a couple Arkansas Missing Persons Days. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, so my state is very, very good about um, missing persons and putting their information out there. They actually have a website that's ran by the state of Arkansas specifically for missing persons, Mm -hmm. uh, which I'm grateful for because as somebody that does research on missing persons, not every state has that. It's very sad. Um, So Arkansas, I think it's every year they have a missing persons event, and and it's in July, I think, every year. Um, They just basically, they have law enforcement there. They have, um, I think, people from the FBI there, people from the crime lab. A lot of people there are involved in missing persons case there, and they let the families ask them questions. They talk to their representatives, like for whoever from the FBI represents them in that area and all that kind of stuff, and they're able to get some information. Um, and I have met a few people. I've met Abel Pitzer's mom. I've mm-hmm. met uh, Cleo's mom. Yep, Glacindra Hall. Met, yep. uh, yeah, I met her mother. I have met David Clark. I've actually known David Clark for a couple of years. I think I met him the first time on the first one I went to, and that was like in 2018. Huh. Um, and yep. it seems like I've met, I feel like there's more, I just can't remember. Oh, mm. uh, Brandon's parents, that's where I met Brandon. Right. Um, Brand- yep. yeah, unfortunately. Right, unfortunately, right. he was found. But that's where I met his par- his parents at that's very right. nice people. That's right. Um, so yeah, I think those are the ones I've I've met so far. How do they react to you? Uh, you oh, know, maybe maybe. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just forgot about I just forgot about somebody. Um, Go ahead. 
David, I think his name was David. He was missing from Arkansas. I'm trying to think of his name or his case. Um, I talked to his sister. Uh, He's the guy that went walking. They said he. They said he went walking, and he. But there's no way he could have went walking. He was in really bad shape. Uh, uh you mean um, Cox? Yeah, that's him, Robert Cox. Robert, Robert Cox, Cox yeah, right? Sister. Right. That's right. Yeah, his so I talked to his sister, sister for yeah, a little while. At yes. Time, but yeah. Yes. Very sweet lady. Right, and who you were talking about? Uh, before, uh, regarding some of these other people that you met, um, did you, did you, what about Travis Robertson? He's another Arkansas. Did you meet his sister? I know yes, that. Yes, 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 his sister. Yes, yes his sister. His sister yes. Right, right. Tonya, yes. A um, sweet, another, you, a sweet girl. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're talking about Brandon Barron's parents that you met. Uh, yep. yeah. Brandon uh, Barron's, yes. Yeah. And very unfortunate that. His remains were found just recently. I think it's interesting. You right. said you knew Nate Dave Clark since like 2018, but he just appeared like within the last couple months. Yeah, um, I think I think what had happened is I think I might have said something to him in person, mm-hmm. and he at the event, and he probably forgot about it. Yeah, it just didn't. You know what I'm saying? And then I had reached out to him, and I don't think I got a response. But then somehow I think you were able to get him. That may that may be how it happened. Yes, he he came on to talk about his mother, uh, Patsy, right, who went missing. Yeah, right. that's the part. I guess what we're saying here is, even though Arkansas, it it seems to me that we've uh, given the population of Arkansas, we've we've covered an inordinate amount, of, way above what you would expect of disappearances from Arkansas. If you're ever wondering that as a listener, the reason is is because that's where Emily's from, and she has all these, she's made all these connections. So we have. I mean, I I haven't well, even counted recently, but we've covered a, a lot of Arkansas disappearances. We have. Well, and I'll be honest with you, uh, Arkansas makes it easy. They make they, mm-hmm. they make it easy to find out information on missing persons because they have that website dedicated to everybody. Right. Um, so that that kind of makes it easier too. And like I said, every state doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, when you've been to some of these uh, missing persons days and introduced yourself, you know, how does that usually go? Maybe people you're talking to, of course, usually we're reaching out, you know, very, I guess, impersonally over the internet. But when you you meet people in person, how are they uh, leery of you or uh, how does that usually go? Um, I don't think they're leery of me necessarily because I'm there at the missing person, at the missing person thing, and I have an unfound shirt on that I wear. Uh-huh. So, um, I just walked at Lake with Brandon's parents. I, I wanted to talk to them, but I didn't see them until I was leaving. So, unfortunately, I pulled up beside them as they were walking out, and I introduced them and told them who I was and said that I had, um, heard about their son's case before and I would like to talk to them and see if we could get them on and found uh-huh. and his parents was like oh yeah yeah yes we're very interested we've been wanting to get him on some podcast so they I told them I would message them and so that's how that went wow very smoothly right very smoothly okay uh, yeah I, I think I've uh, unfortunately I've only been to one Florida uh, missing Persons Day, but I did get to meet Joyce Rivetuzo uh, that time um, that I that I got to do that a few years ago. And so, uh, when this is held in Arkansas, where is it held? I mean, what do they do at one of these Arkansas Missing Persons Days? When since you've gone there, what do they do? Um. So they the uh, well, this last time he didn't show up, but the Attorney General will usually show up. And they will stand up there, and they were rec- like they have a screen that shows their picture, and they will call up, call the person's name, and their family member comes up and and um, accepts like something from them. Like I think the first time I went, it was a plaque. That's how they did it at that time. Okay. And this last year, the family members stood in a line, and they went up on stage, and they showed a picture, and they said who they were, like. Who they how they were related to that missing person that missing person and said the missing person's name mm-hmm. um, and they gave them lanterns that we had to turn on throughout the whole program. Wow! They do that and then uh, Morgan Nick Foundation uh, Morgan Nick's mother actually stands up and recognizes. She awards gives some awards to different police departments in the state of Arkansas on something that they did like saving a child or something like that. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes they'll have a guest speaker like this past year they had, um, the the guy went missing from Arkansas, but he was found in Texas alive, I think on the beach and his mother gave a speech. Um, then they have, uh, the state crimes stands up and they talk about, um, everything they do. Mm -hmm. Then you have the FBI's, every FBI person introduce themselves and what um, area of Arkansas they cover. And then er the family members get to talk to their representatives. Um, Yeah. And they also have, I think, training on um, sex trafficking. I think they also have sex trafficking training too. So it's a big deal. Big deal. A lot of stuff goes on there. Uh, how many of those well, have I you been so. to? Yeah, how many of those have you been to now? I've only been to two. To two, okay. Yeah. All right, and that's held in Little Rock, in the capital. No, it's held. I think it's in Bitten, I believe. Okay. It's right there by Little Rock, but it's oh, it in, is. but it's not. It's yeah, it's Bitten, I believe. Okay. What has that been like for you? Of course, you uh, you know, like you said, going way back, you take an interest, wanted to be a homicide detective. And then you uh, eventually hear, for example, about Morgan Nick's uh, disappearance uh, that left an impression. And then, then years down the road as an adult, there you are. You're talking to these people. You're seeing them in person. They know who you are. It, it, you know, is that kind of weird for you? Or is it kind of like full circle? Did you ever think you'd be in that position uh, doing that? Mm, it, it, like I like get nervous. I'm not gonna do, lie. Do you? I'm okay. not a shy person, but I do get nervous like approaching somebody I don't I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially in that matter, because there's so many emotions, you don't know what they're gonna how they're gonna feel. Some people can't handle it. Right. And some people just break down crying at the thought. You know, when you say something new, and then some people, you know, they just don't want to be bothered. And I, those are the ones I feel bad for because I if I didn't want to think about it, I wouldn't want somebody to approach me either. I don't think. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm right. also just trying to help help them spread the word of their missing loved ones. So right. um, I just do it because I would want if I was them, I would want any help I could get either. So yeah, I guess uh, you know maybe a comparison I would draw in my own life is as I've stated before the first, I think the first disappearance I ever looked up on the internet when the internet became a thing was Jody Hoosentrud because she went missing right around the time like the internet got popular in 1995. And so it was so weird for me, like 25 years later, that here I am, or a little less than that, but getting to know Caroline Lowe, you know, and the people at findjody.com and and all of that, and then featuring the discipline, you know, it's just so like, wow, I could have never imagined that, but here we are, you know, it, you know, something like that. Yeah, I the same way. Yeah. I never thought I would be in this, if you were to ask me. Eight years ago, I never thought I would be in this position, mm-hmm. like going out, you know, doing stuff like this, talking to family members like that. You know, I never would have thought that. No. Mm-hmm. How does your, uh, of course, yeah. I, I know your relationship, and you, you two have been a couple for a couple years now. You, like, you know, I know that you work together. How does your the man in your life uh, feel about? you know, your passion for this? Is he into true crime too? Is he into disappearances, or is this kind of just like your thing alone? No, he listens to it. Um, <laughs> actually, when we when we sit down to watch a show or something, he'll say, like, I'll say, what do you want to watch? Sometimes he'll say, oh, we can watch a true crime show <laughs> <laughs> or, a cr- <laughs> or a criminal show. So, And he listens to Unfound with me um, sometimes, so he, he doesn't mind it. And he, he has a good heart, too. He likes helping people, too, so he, he encourages me to do it. Right, because you, yeah, yeah, you're both in the medical field, so you have to have that kind right. of uh, wanting, you know, wanting to help, you know, wanting to help people, right? For sure, exactly. And uh, you yep. should, the listeners should know it should be it should be known that once in a while Emily uh, will contact me as she's listening to an episode, and you'll give me an opinion on something, you know, and you'll say, "Well, I'm here listening to it with my boyfriend, and we were wondering what you know what this is." It, it it happens once in a while, but it always cracks me up, Emily. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes he listens to it. Like I said, he listens to them too, and he'll have questions, and then sometimes we'll discuss what we think happened. And yeah. sometimes he makes really good points, you know? Yeah, sure. So. Sure. Um, you know, going back to when we first met, 
Uh, and what was it like maybe, for example, with Brandy Wells or maybe some of these other disappearances like Clashendra Hall, some of these people, you get, you know, you get to know these people, you talk to them and then they end up appearing like me interviewing them officially. And you know that the work that you did, you know, then causes people to, you know, know about a disappearance in Ireland and Australia all over the world, you know, can you go back to like 2017 when this started to happen? You know, was it weird? What was it like? Um, it was a little different, but I was just happy that these people were getting attention that they been begging for pretty much and been needing and that their loved one gets the attention because it's to me it's heartbreaking that there's so many cases that people don't know about. Like there's some that they don't even know about them and it's in their own city, their own town. And to me that's just sad. So it was like it made me feel good that they were finally getting the attention. They were finally mm-hmm. getting some attention, attention that they needed. You know, because right. these people deserve it. Right. Right. What? Uh, just maybe a little more open-ended question. What would you like to say about, you know, what do you think that you've learned about uh, missing persons cases and disappearances since we started working together in 2017, what are some of the things that have surprised you, that have really opened your eyes? Just some things, if you can think of them off the top of your head. Um, yes, how so many police departments do not have a missing persons, um, like, unit, specifically for missing persons. Like, that was so surprising to me. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, like, the bigger towns, the bigger cities, because I know not all of them had that, and that was just so, so surprising to me. Um... Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I felt like drugs played a lot of role in a lot of missing people, so that wasn't so so surprising to me, right. um, per se. I knew I figured relationships played a lot of role in missing persons, same goes for money. So those really didn't surprise me, but just the amount of missing persons. Like, just, just like, how, and then how people can just vanish, and nobody says anything. Like, that that was one of the things that surprised me, is people know things, but they don't say anything. Like, I'm like, how could you know something and not try to help these people? Because right. I know that if the roles were switched, those people would want somebody to say something. Right. Right, what do you, so, uh, I mean, right, and uh, maybe I'll ask you this, you know, uh, of course, we, you and I both, uh, at one point, we're just part of the general public. And now hi, here I am, you know, hosting the, the podcast, you assisting, you know, talking to a lot of people out there. You know, what is one of those things that, you know, is, you, you've already said that, but has it been kind of uh, weird for you to get a, like a look behind the curtain on all of this, you know, to become so immersed yeah. in this? Yes, because it's amazing what the public does not know about these cases. Yeah. It's amazing what is not put out there about these cases that we find out. Right. You know, and so it's like, yeah, and then when I hear things, like the, I find things about the case that's not put out there, and I know a case is coming out, I get excited for everybody else to know. Yep. You know, yeah, especially because the- I feel like it can help the, it can help them help a lot of these cases, you know, if people know more about them. Right. And certainly, uh, you know, you just named one, like Brandon Barron's. I mean, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but Unfound featured his disappearance, and then just a couple months later, and sadly, but his remains were found. You know, right. you know, and you think back, you know, did um, you know, did we have something to do with that? Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I, I don't know, but that some, there's certainly something. Yeah, I think about that too. You know, because. I feel like sometimes it takes emotions to press on people's heart. And when they hear these families, you know, begging mm-hmm. and pleading and talking about how their life is devastated after the mission, their loved one went missing, I feel like that can open some people's hearts and wanting them to talk that know something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And the listeners yeah. should know, I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe you know this as well, Emily, is in 2023... We had five disappearances that we covered during that year that actually got solved in the same year, um, which I, I, you know, that's uh, something. They were Brandon Barron, Alan Glasgow, Brandon Roberts, Bowman, and there, there is one more there that is escaping my mind right at this side, Matthew Braswell. But we had these four, dis- five disappearances, all men coincidentally, 
that we featured them and just weeks or just a few months later they get solved. Fortunately, I guess two of those guys were found alive. So, right. you know, we might, I like to think we're doing uh, something right here. Uh, what about the rest of your family? Yeah, like, you know, we talked about your boyfriend, but what about the rest of your family? What do they think about your fascination with disappearances and assisting in a podcast? Uh, what do they think about it? Um, so, I mean, they think I'm doing something good. They're proud of me. Like I said, they <laughs> my parents raised me to, you know, help people when I can um, and help comes in all forms of ways. Uh-huh. Um, they just tell me to be careful, you know, because yeah, sometimes you know helping, you know, could get you could get you hurt in some cases. You can. Um, so my dad, so my dad specifically, he's like, you need to be careful, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes. <laughs> so yes, so, uh, I think he worries about me a little bit in that sense because um, uh-huh. he's like, you don't know who you're, you don't know who you could be for when we live, you know. And I'm like, well, you know, you got a point, but. And then my mom, she just is pr- she's proud of me for helping. Is she? Um, and then yeah, and then my sister thinks it's cool. Sometimes she'll ask me questions about different cases. If I if I'm listening to a case and she's around, she'll sometimes ask me about things. Mm-hmm. And she knows I'm into true crime. And sometimes she likes watching some some criminal shows. So sometimes she'll ask me, text me, what do you think about this? You know. Mm-hmm. So, Let's maybe talk a little bit about your process, Emily. Of course, uh, maybe the listeners don't know. I don't tell Emily what uh, disappearances to reach out to. She pretty much does this. All, maybe once in a while that happens. For the most part, though, Emily's just working on her own. She's reaching out to people that catch her attention. But what's a little bit of your process? How do you go about choosing which people you're going to contact? How do you find people to contact? If, of course, if it's not like a missing persons day, but like on the Internet, what's kind of your process? So, um, I have sometimes I have people that reach out directly to me, want me to cover a certain case, and then I'll look into that. Um, and a, the, a lot of videos I'm just scrolling on Facebook, and I'm, uh, I'm a member of a lot of missing persons groups, and people are always posting. And so, I'll just, you know, if I see one that, you know, at least a year old, and it seems like we could help them, I screenshot it. If I can't look into it right then, I'll screenshot it and then go back later. But if I can, I'll just, you know, find whoever posted it, send them a quick message, mm-hmm. tell them who I am, what I do, um, and ask them if they would like to talk to me. Um, yeah. Just let me know. We can, we can schedule a time to talk and, right. uh, about their missing loved one. Right. And, uh, the, and you may... I use the Charlie Project. I'm sorry. But no, please continue. Please. Uh, sometimes I use Charlie Project to, like, if I see a case uh, that don't have a lot of information, I'll, that's really when I go back to Charlie Project and try to see if I can find out more information. Also use Google, um, and then I just, sometimes I just go and I look in these different missing persons groups, and I'll just look up cases. Um, especially those, like, I don't mind helping anybody, but especially those that don't get a lot of attention, and there's so many that don't get a lot of attention. So those I specifically try to work on mm-hmm. and reach out to specifically those type of people um, because I know that they really a lot of them really need it. Yeah, I guess what we're also saying, even though as I myself, and this is one of those things I guess for the listeners that Emily and I share is that we really are motivated by those disappearances that don't seem to have gotten a lot of coverage that aren't well known. Right? It's kind of like for both right. of us. For both of us. Exactly. Right. And those people, of course, some of the, their family members can be hard to reach, but we, we were very fortunate that we've been able to do that. And maybe just to continue right. what Emily was saying, here's what then happens is Emily talks to these people. She takes her own notes, and then she sends those notes to me, and usually it's like three or four or five paragraphs. And then I can use that, so I kind of, um, before I ever talk to the person for myself, and we getting, pre- you know, getting prepared for an actual public interview, that I don't go into talking to this person totally cold. I've got Emily, I know how she thinks about these things, she gives me her notes, and then I can use those notes to like further question the person in preparing for an interview. And, uh, you know, I should say, Emily, you put so much work into that, writing all that out, you know, all those paragraphs out. 
Yeah, I try. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of pauses sometimes, and I have to tell, ask people to repeat themselves. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's well written. You should. Everybody should know Emily, uh, good writer. Every time I get one of these write ups uh, through Messenger, you know, I talk to the person. Here's the person's number. Here's her name, and I'll, things are remarkably well written, Emily. Uh, so you should try, take great pride in your writing. You really should. I guess college is paying off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Let's, uh, you know, let's go back maybe just to you personally outside of Unfound. You know, where, what's the future hold for you in 2024? I know you, uh, we don't want to really get into it here, but your life's seen a lot of changes over the last five years. Where is 2024 taking you? Um, I'll have my degree by summer. And then um, we're hoping to try to move to Arkansas because right now we live in Kansas and I want to be back in Arkansas. So that's what we're hoping to do. And then we're just going to work and travel for a few months. Um, and then eventually I want, I want to go to nursing school. So right Good. now that's what it looks like. Good for you. Busy, busy, busy. That's, that's right. That's right. And uh, it's still she finds uh, some time to do a, uh, some unfound work. Although it, it's my perception. I totally get it. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're working on your career and all that. Certainly you've been a lot busier with the other things in your life. You know, like in 2023, right. maybe not as many talking to as many people, but really I get it. And no complaint here. You know, I want you, you right. know, whatever you have through the dreams in your life, Emily, I want you to fulfill them. You know, so I, I get that. Right. Um, yeah, but, it can be hard to manage everything. It can, I'll be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot, a lot of time spent, but your your degree and your education and in being in relationship uh, with your boyfriend, those certainly are the most important things in your life. Any time that you, you give to Unfound, I, I just want you to know that I deeply, deeply, uh, I'm deeply thankful for that. I, I really, yes, you sir. know. I'm and, grateful too. Yeah, and the, I can't believe it's going to be like seven years in April or May. I know. I, I don't know where the time Crazy. is gone. I don't either. It went by so fast. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I was, yeah, I was actually in my 40s when we first started working together. So that's how long ago uh, it was for me. It's hard, it's hard to believe, but it's gone so smoothly. Well, I was in my 20s, so. <laughs> and that's, yeah, yes, well, I wasn't going to say what I uh, what age you are, but I know you're like uh, at least uh, 20 years younger than I am. But, uh, yeah. you, you know, I, you know I, would, I think we work pretty well together. You know, even though we've we never do. met, I, I think we do. Yeah. We do. We, we work good together. You listen to me and I listen to you. We both give our opinions on things. We don't always agree on things, yeah. but I feel like we're respectful to each other's feelings. Yeah, right. And one more thing. Uh, yeah. you know, Emily, not only does she reach out to these guys, we already talked like about Brandy Wells and, and her mother and, and um, keeping in contact, but you keep in contact with quite a few of the other guests as well, right? Mainly, I think, the Arkansas people, um, but what, what can you say about that? Yes, I do. I message them every once in a while. Um, sometimes they'll message me. I try to see how, um, of course, I don't reach out to every single person, but mm -hmm. um, there's certain ones I do. Um, and I just I just know better. They keep in contact with me. I keep in contact with them. Um, but yeah, I do, and check on them and stuff, and you know, it's really sad. A lot of times I don't know what to say to them because I just feel so bad for them, you know, their position that they're in. But right. I think it's most important, Emily. We just want them to realize that even though the episodes come out and we've moved on to talking to other people, none of these people are forgotten. Um, exactly. We, you know, we, even though we've done the interview and everything, we're always, I'm always ready to talk to guests who have been on Unfound anytime, as I know you are as well. We're always ready to talk. Right. Exactly. You know, they, this is you not know, something we're just using them and then, oh, the heck with it. We're moving on. My, my phone's already, you know, we're always ready to talk as you are. You are. Yeah, and I'm sure you get this too. Right? As a matter of fact, I think I know you do. That sometimes even after the episodes come out, they'll still message us and get our advice on different things. Yep, they do. Um, I have that too. Yep, so. that's exactly right. And I, I get thank yous from when we do like the update episodes, you know, when I try to update right. people, you know, if somebody's been found or is there new information, somebody's been charged or anything, I know they really appreciate that as well. 
Exactly. They yeah, sure do. Yeah, even going back to those disappearances that are way back now in like 2017. Right. Yeah. All right, so we I have two questions. I've already interviewed uh, Carrie, and I asked her. I'm going to ask each of the uh, my assistants that I'm going to interview. Of course, we got Carrie, got Emily right now, and I'm going to be interviewing Eric and Cherie this coming weekend. But I'm asking all of you two questions about two specific unfound cases. And so I've already asked Carrie, and she's given your answers, her answers. Now I'm going to ask you the same two questions, so so everybody can see kind of what goes on behind the scenes of like what, what we think about particular cases. First of all, what do you think happened to Tom Brown? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. I, I don't, <laughs> that, that is a very hard one because there is a lot of, of suspicious things that it seemed have went on after his body was found. Don't make me think that it's suicide, um, but at the same time, I don't know who would hurt him and why they would want to hurt him. So it's like, uh-huh. I, I don't really know. I'm, that one, I'm stuck on that one. All right, you're stuck. And uh, like I said, these are not easy questions, but kind of, uh, you know, I guess we could say Carrie so far. I don't know what Cherie and Eric are going to say, but, you know, that's uh, that's a tough one. You know, it's, uh, you know, Carrie kind of was like, uh, I, my thing is she's kind of like the same thing, a kind of, uh, yeah. questioning which way to go. The other one is, yeah. did Steve Pankey kill Janelle Matthews? Oh, I will certainly say he made himself look really guilty by some of the statements that he did uh-huh. or some of the statements that he said. Yeah. Um. If I was on that jury, I would I would have to pro- probably vote for no because I just I had doubt there. <clears throat> okay, all right. So it, it may, so you so should know. If, if I was, please go ahead. Please, please. If I was on a jury, he would probably be acquitted because I just I had I had doubt. Okay. I mean, it's just because there's a lot of people that say they committed crimes that they didn't do. That's right. So it's like, ugh, I don't know. I, there's just a lot of questions. Yeah, uh, yeah, and now you should know, with that one, Kerry could not say he was guilty fast enough. You should know. Uh, and and w- once again, I'm not sure what Eric and Sheree are going to say when I ask them the same two questions. But, uh, you, so it sounds to me like, Emily, maybe you and I are a little closer in agreement than maybe Kerry and I. But this, I, I, I ask these questions, you should know, Emmy, Emily. Uh, because I want people to know that this is not some sort of group think that we do here. In fact, you can you can just say this for yourself. There are many disappearances where we all disagree with each other, correct? Yes. Yeah. There we, is. Yeah. <laughs> you can, people could see what we talk about like in our little messenger group that we have. A lot oh, of different yeah. opinions. And even though I'm the leader, none of my assistants are under any obligation to agree with me ever on anything. You know, um, and I and I think you know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like I said, we we disagree a lot, um, especially mm. on cases where there's a lot of speculation and it don't point just towards one person. That's Those right. are the cases yeah. that we disagree with usually most of the time on. That's right. That's right. And so we have um, very free thinking going on here at Unfound Behind the Scenes, and I want that. You know, I, I don't want assistance. Emily is not a yes person. Carrie is not a yes person either. Is Eric either is Sheree. That as the leader and, um, you know, I always want your honest opinions on everything. And that will be always the situation. In addition, you know, and obviously on the opinions on disappearances as well. Always. Right. Always. Exactly. Well, let me ask you one more. I, I, please. Go ahead. Please. No, I was going to say, I don't think that's something that a lot of the people realize is that we actually discuss some of these cases Mm -hmm. for like over and over again, and then we even come back to them. They're our little messenger. So like, we have some heavy discussions on some of these cases. We have. You're absolutely right. And once again, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. We listen to each other. There's no arguing. It's all very mature. All very uh, adult-like. Everybody respecting each each other, and that's what I like so much uh, about 
all of these people who have uh, who are assistants for me. I cannot thank all of you enough. Everybody keeps it very professional, very professional. Yes, we're great. Thank. You. Let me ask you one more question, just about disappearances. What you think you know about your knowledge? Do you think you know you've done a lot of work? I mean, you know, I've only been hosting the podcast since 2016. You've been assisting since you know somewhere in the spring of 2017. Do you think that, you know, I may be public speaking, I don't know if you think you're a good public speaker or not. Do you think that you could actually, you know, teach people, you know, about disappearances? Do you think you've learned that much over the past seven years? Or where do you think you are in your disappearance knowledge? Okay, well, first off, I'm not a public speaker. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, all right. (laughs) But I could talk about what I know, but also know that I don't know a whole lot. Um, uh-huh. I just feel like maybe I know different things because I've talked to so many different people um, that, you know, we may see things that they, they don't like, you know, how drugs, money, relationships, stuff like that is is almost involved in every single missing person's case. It's yeah. one of those issues. Yeah. You know, people may not realize that, but we know that. You yeah. know, that's something we can pe- tell people about. So it's stuff like that that may I may know that other people may not know. But I feel like I still have a lot to learn. But, I mean, I could tell them what I do know, um, Mm. which is more than I knew when I first started. Sure. Of course. You know? Right. Okay. Emily, any final words uh, before we complete this interview? Yes. I would just like to thank everybody that comes on Unfound and trust us with the information that they give us because I feel like... You know, in some cases, they're really giving us information that, you know, can't get out there. You know what I'm saying? And so I just appreciate that they trust us that much. Um, And I appreciate all my, all the other team members for all the work they do and Ed for all the work you do. Because I know it's it's a lot. And I don't know about everybody else, but for me, it can be emotionally draining sometimes. Yeah. Um, because you have to hear these family members talk about the worst, some of the worst times in their life. And to me, it can be emotionally exhausting. Um, so, but mm-hmm. I'm so grateful to be able to have this opportunity to do this and to maybe help somebody spread the word of their missing loved one. And um, I'm just grateful that you've given me this opportunity. And I look forward to talking to more people yeah. in the future. And I hope we continue can can continue this for many many. Let's hope we get at least another seven years, Emily. I'm yes, hoping for at least another seven, that. if not fourteen, if not twenty one more years. You know, to the right. point where uh, you know you'll be my age and I'll be twenty years older. You'll be in your early fifties and <laughs> I'll be in my I'll be in my seventies still doing Unfound. That I would have no problem with that at all. That would be that, I think that Me would be either. that would be great. Okay. Emily, I really appreciate you uh, taking some time out of this Monday uh, to talk about yourself and your experience with unfounded disappearances. I uh, really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you all to the listeners. And that was my January 15th, 2024 interview with Emily, the assistant who has been with me the longest. I really don't know how she has survived me this long. I hope you enjoyed our talk. Next Monday, March 4th, please tune in for my interview with assistant Eric, currently the only male assistant that I have, although I think, pretty sure, we are bringing on another male assistant, and I'm very excited about that. Anyway, I'm Ed Denzel, and you've been listening to a special episode of Unfound.